Gonna have a good day. Gonna, gonna be, be a good, good day today. today. Welcome to the show, Dr. Living Good, Nurse Living Good. Hope you're living good. If you're not, you're in the right place. <laughs> yes. You too can live good. You too can live you good. Too can One live living good. factor to get you what you want. What do you want today? If you're thinking about that one, because it's coming right up in a moment. How is Easter, beautiful? Oh, Easter was lovely. Everyone is good with you. What? Every Easter is good with you? Yes. You telling me, or you that were you? Is that what's coming out of my mouth to you? No, I was, I was saying that to you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Every day. So is, good. Good every time Easter of year. Is the, it is. It's just just a good. Yeah. We have a nice. We are very. We have a nice holiday Easter tradition. Yeah. It's good. We don't See have to cook. And we don't have to host. Lots of playing. And lots we of don't get to, I guess I should Focus say. on the kiddos. Lots and... of escape kiddo time. Yeah. Lots of warm weather. Oh, but before we even left, strawberry lemonade energize. The kids are obsessed with it. Did you love it? Did you get some? Oh, you know, Kevin tried it. They wouldn't have yet. had it yet. Can't try it yet, probably. Yeah, because it's oh. probably on the way. Did you get one? I hope you got one in time. The Easter event. My mom was so cute the other day. She's like, hey, lemonade. I'm going to get some of this. Is there, is there anything else I should try? She placed her order. Within two days, it was on her doorstep. She's like, that was the best customer service ever and the best delivery ever. And then she's mad because we announced the strawberry energized right after she ordered. She's like, I asked if there's anything else I should get. I'm like, forgot that wasn't announced yet. I, yeah. Sorry. We announced it like two days well, later. If you need any help with forgot. anything, support standing by. For those scenarios or whatever, support is standing by. Just hit them up in the comments. But yes, I hope you're loving it or going to love it as soon as you get it and it arrives. You will go. You will go to love it. <laughs> you will go to. You love are. It. You will going to love it. I think it's just a perfect just springtime, summertime. It's just another alternative to uh, the other amazing energized flavor. Yeah. Refreshing, and it has a ton of benefits. I Ele- think especially country in the summer, like electrolytes are you're gonna be sweating mm-hmm. a lot. Mungus. What most people are deficient in it anyway oh and then by the way we have we're a week into the challenge so people are starting to lose weight if you are losing weight you have to get electrolytes in because your body has to get rid of you get a lot rid of a lot of water weight right with the water goes the salts Mm. you have to put those back in so you could just chug some salt our salt pepper shaker or salt you could just squirt some salt in your mouth or get all of the electrolytes squirt salt squirt well you know but yes, so so excited. So that was so much fun to kick that off and then roll right into Easter. It's like, and then you had the Easter recipe guide. How many of you made those foods? I saw some pictures, making foods, tried it out for the meals, share what you made. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Our Easter tradition in both of our families now. It was back when I was growing up, and now where we go now, a tradition is. An unhealthy version of strawberry pie. And I'm not going to lie. I would put mine right up next to the other one. And I bet you couldn't tell. I bet you couldn't tell. I'd take yours. I would too. I bet you couldn't tell. Yeah, you made some of them. Oh, it's good. Lots of people trying stuff. So. (laughs) I'd put mine right up next to it. Next time I'm going to do that. We can't really bring stuff, but I will. Yeah, you, you did like all your cooking like a week before and yeah. went for it. And then you're able to just relax, mama. Well, nice. If well, you, if that, no, either way. You still got three little things to take care of. And humans. make sure they well, they behave little in someone humans. else's home. Yes. They do because they're angels. They are. And they are so, they were so thankful for Easter and Easter parties. Well, now I just feel we're Easter rolling. Friends. It's second quarter already of the year. Second quarter. First one's gone. We're coming up on halftime now. That's crazy when you put it like that. Okay, so it's time to go. And you might not know where to go. So today we're going to talk about what do you you want. And I'm going to give you the number one factor, I believe, to getting that. And it's something I feel like you can just easily lose. You can easily get cloaked and and you can't see it anymore. Or you don't feel it anymore. You don't. happens to me. happens to you. happens to all of us at some point. I want to reestablish this one factor today. Should I go? Let's go. What do you want? 
I'm a very simple person. What do you want? What are you going after? What is it you want right now? Sometimes that's the question you got to spend so much oh time my on. Goodness. What do you want? Real simply, let's just go health-wise maybe. What do you want? What are you trying to is it off the medications? Is it shedding pounds? Is it cleaning up eating? Is it inflammation? Is it a condition you sort of struggle with or nagging thing that's been going on? What do you want? Do you want them to answer or are you asking them to just... They don't have to. They certainly don't have to share this to Facebook world. What do you want? That's a deep question. You may spend some time on that a little bit. What do you... What it could do you, be simple. You're, it could be simple. Like, what are you hungry for? What do you desire? What are you hungry for? Like, what do you... Oh, I just really want to... I want... Is there any of that in you? <laughs> Maybe not. Your desire tummy is not grumbling. <laughs> What do you hunger for? Are you hungry? Hmm. Not that, Barry. Not talking about that. <laughs> but do you have like a, yeah, just is something I'm really leaning, learning, yearning, yearning, yearning. There it is, yearning, leaning, learning, yearning, yearning, yearning for. You're kind of just like, I, I, I got a hunger. I have a desire to go get that thing. A powerful word mm -hmm. from a hunger perspective because of a lot of us, we just go seek and find. It's drive through, gas station, cupboard, fridge, freezer, oven. We go. Now it's app. Mm -hmm. yeah. And never in our history has there ever been a time you can just boop and you can get that Anything. whatever you desire. So that is a great analogy for what happens it's sometimes so easy to suffice certain cravings mm -hmm. in our world that we we don't have to sit in a period of hunger very long hunger i believe is the factor give me 100 hungry people in a challenge and i will show you 100 crazy life transformations mm -hmm. someone that hungers for it because do you when we go back, you know, see three questions above. What do you really want? Is it a craving or are you truly hungry mm. for that thing? We are in a world of cravings. Mm -hmm. Try this out. I know I probably shouldn't have that, quick but I'm going to do a little bit of it. Quick fix. Absolutely. Right? We have this craving world where we're just instant gratification. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't have to sit in that hunger very long. So do you have a craving to lose weight? Do you have a craving to overcome that condition you've had for a long time? That's so good. Do you have a craving to be a better person? Or are you truly hungry to go get that and go through what it means to grow your own food, harvest your own food, make your own food so you know exactly where it came from mm -hmm. and it's the healthiest version of what you could, like that's a process to go through or are you just leaning on Uber Eats? Mm -hmm. Is that how you're promote, pro approaching things? So that kind of means like you want the weight off but you're still having the soda, mm -hmm. right? You want the medication freedom but you keep going back to the doctor for a next for the next pill. Mm -hmm. These these trends are truly hungry to overcome the medications, but you just keep going back to the doctor. The only thing that can offer you is an additional medication. But I don't I don't like drugs. I don't want to do it. like. Well, I'm I'm not saying if there's not a medical condition, you got to go get it. You know, taken care of an oversight. But if you keep walking back into there for your anxiety for your depression, for this you know, weird feeling in your gut, for this everything that pops up, you're just gonna keep getting more of what you actually don't want of want, and you're just kind of got a little craving, but not that hunger. You want the anxiety gone, but you keep scrolling the news feeds <laughs> and watching the news channel. That's true. You keep feeding anxiety, but you want that gone. So there's got to be a deep hunger that just says, I got I got to get to the bottom of this thing. I have to fix this true hunger. I actually got to get myself to true hunger first and just really be committed and really be dialed in on what I want 
and nothing's going to stop me from getting there. And I'm not going to give in to the quick fixes that of the traps I keep falling into. A true hunger to get what you want. What was a time, all of us have succeeded here. I'd love to hear this. What was a time in your life that you sacrificed what you wanted now for what you wanted most? Can you name one? Can you be my? What was a time in your life you sacrificed what you wanted now so that you could get what you wanted most. I mean, I feel like this is an easy, like this is an easy answer. The first one that came to my mind. Sure, I can come up with. Some good, more let's roll. We're good. We're we're live. The easiest answer was when you get when I got pregnant with yep. my three babies. I had to really focus on all my things. Extra water, which I'm not good at. Obviously, you can't have certain types of foods or certain types of drinks during that, like because I wanted a healthy baby. You were hungry later. for a healthy baby. Yeah. So you were willing to do whatever really it took in the example, moment. Though. Wasn't perfect, but you were sacrificing what you wanted now for what you want most. I can come up with a better one. What was yours at a time when you sacrificed? You've succeeded here some. Maybe it was the diet or program, that's why I don't like those things, but maybe you did do it right for 60 days. Maybe it was um, you, you, you didn't go out because you wanted to remove yourself from, from that way of living and you committed to healthier social circles. And you maybe it was financially, you wanted to get the car, the thing, the house, the, but you just saved and saved and put yourself in a better financial situation. What, what was it? You've done that. I've done that. You've done that. We've all had moments where we say, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. The reason you were able to do it is because your hunger was big enough. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a craving for the thing that you desired. You truly were hungry to get that result. That's good. Nothing bigger to drive it than a healthy baby. My goodness. I mean, that's a perfect example, I think. Do it again. You can do it again. So that's the first side of hunger that I wanted to touch on. You see, hunger and that deprivation and that, oh, I've got that desire in me, that brings value. Mm -hmm. See, watch. Those of you, you've been sick before, or maybe you had a very close loved one, like my dad, very sick, and you see someone that can't get up on their own power. You see someone stuck in a hospital bed. You see the medical bills that stack up. You see the number of pills they swallow in a day. You, you see the lack of energy. You see the, you feel the inflammation going on in your system. When you've lost that health and you've been so sick, you know the value of health. Mm -hmm. You know the value of feeling good. You know the value of a pill-free life. See, there's value in that suffering that you can flip and turn into a hunger. When you've been broke and you don't have any money, then you understand the value of wealth. You understand the value of a roof over your head. You understand the value of a car. When you've had a bad relationship, you understand the value of the good ones. And it's oftentimes those bad ones that actually created the good ones. That's how I work of I, I, my experience, I'm like, I don't want whatever that is going on over there. I want to create this over here Look at this one, right? You see other people, when, when you've had a bad job, you then know what a good job looks like. I, I literally could have been featured on Bad Jobs, the show. <laughs> From some of the things that I have done, but I tell you, it taught me a hunger for working hard at something that wasn't nearly like the hard work I had to do during. I had to go into a building at 8.30 at night <laughs> with 10,000 chickens in it. This is crazy, I get it, but I'm Dr. Living Good now, but when you understand a little bit where I've come from, and I have to work my way around the building, picking up the chickens, having them scratch me, peck me, <laughs> empty themselves on us, like dirtiest, nastiest, you have to have a mask on. This is when masks weren't cool. Okay, you had to wear one of those. And so it is in the middle of summer. 
It's 90 degrees. It got a mask on. I'm getting pecked by chickens. And then I have to lift them six feet, six into the air to hand them to another gentleman who is going to put them into a truck and then they're going to bring them in. It was a chicken processing plant. I literally would come home and my mother would make me stay outside and I would have to undress outside down to the skivvies and then go in a shower. She's like, you ain't coming in here with all that on? I mean, you literally, it was a separate wash for the clothes. Surprised I didn't have to wash them in the creek in our front yard myself. But when you've had a job like that, or I mean mowing, I would have seven, eight mowing jobs at a time. And so my friends are at the pool and I'm like, I got, I got two lawns to mow. Weedy, oh, the worst thing ever. So, some people get pleasure out of that line. They do, and there's some people that do, they actually do that work. So that one wasn't as like the chicken catchers of the world. I'm like, you know, if you've ever done that, we can relate. You know, that's just whoo. So I don't know if there's that many people. Some people do get joy out of the, the the mowing side of it, but when you got to do seven of them and responsible for those every week or every two or weeks, the kid. and and you're when your you know hurt. yeah, and you're 16 kind of thing. Like, so I've had some some bad ones, some hard ones. So I know what a good one was. So then my dad always told me, stop using the back, use the brain, <laughs> stop using the brawn, use the brain. So we give that opportunity. But I just tell you that because I can relate to the hunger that that brings to say, wow, I can actually put the same amount of effort, if you were to quantify it, into something else and make a difference or something I actually enjoy. Um, unfortunately, I didn't enjoy catching chickens. <laughs> so you create that hunger hunger brings value you can understand it so you've been through some things use that flip it and allow that to be used to create the hunger or remove some of those things deprive yourself from a few things and rekindle the hunger rekindle like if I have to spend longer than a couple of days, maybe there's been some scenarios where you go back to, you know, you go to grandma's for a few days and I'm, you know, here and there's that separation. We always talk about it. It's like, mm -hmm. ah, no, I, <laughs> I get a hunger back of like, and I, but I always want to try to keep that going. And so trim your budget way down and deprive yourself of some of the things that you've got real loose spending on and get a hunger back for realizing the value of that hard earned money that you're actually, how much you're actually wasting. Deprive yourself of some of the fast food. Deprive yourself, do some fasting. There's an incredible step-by-step -step process called the Metabolism Reset in Living a Daily Lifestyle Members area that will deprive you of some food for a while and you will get an appreciation with your relationship with food and your relationship with vegetables and your relationship with fruits because when you have to go a period of time without any of that stuff, you appreciate all of it way more. That, Truly yeah. getting your hunger going the right way. So there's a, that's the kind of a second, the first of you of just rekindling that hunger, the second of you of realizing some of the things you're going through, been through, are what creates the value so you can understand the desire and the hunger. You might have lost a little bit of that, but then there's some of us, maybe you have this privileged palate. You have, you have success obesity. You've gotten what you've want. You've gotten it so much, it's become common. Mm. Are you in a place of the things that you once hungered for have now become common? You have a privileged palate now. You, you get to enjoy that taste a lot. And now it's not that special anymore. My grandpa, on his anniversary with grandma, would take us to my other grandpa's okay. restaurant. It was called Living Goods. Okay, we're not going to rekindle this. Uh, and, supper and club. Fire. <laughs> it was a supper club. And and my my mom's dad would take us to the Living Goods Supper Club. And it was buffet. And they had you know you'd get your, you have your steaks and then you have your salad bar and you have your it was it was incredible. And but you in in that day and age there wasn't that many restaurants. So grandpa kind of got on the supper club trained real early, had a lot of success with it. And then to the point where when grandpa, my other grandpa on the other side, would go take us in a special occasion, it was a big deal for everybody to go out to eat, right? And then that started to evolve into, um, you know, all of your pizza chains as a child to, you know, Applebee's becoming the neighborhood to, 
Now we have multiple fast foods where we can get it just immediate. And now you don't even leave the house. Mm -hmm. Like if it was grandpa and grandma's anniversary in today's age, it was just, you know, what do you want delivered? And there was, there's no, there was no, we, we would get, it was, it was ties for all the kids. It was suit for grandpa. We're going out, Mm -hmm. get in the car. We're going out. Right. And now how that's become, I'm not saying it's a super negative thing, but that, acquired privileged palate so to say good example that a lot of us now have that was an appreciation for someone that had a hunger to just want to take their family out for a nice meal because all they ever got was a farm and the potatoes and the you know coming in from twice a day you got to go milk the cows you got that's all my grandpa ever knew and to be able to take his family out what a privilege that was he desired he hungered that i don't know why i thought of that one when I was going through that acquired palate. But what was once really good in your life that's now just become normal? When you had that hunger to get the weight off and you were dialed in on what you were eating and you were you were paying attention to your food every meal and you were getting into new recipes and you were just diving into Living Good Daily and the Make Food Simple book and you were learning about different toxicities and you were reading labels and you would go to the store and spend two hours in the store just finding the goodies that were going to be approved that's going to align with the results that you wanted and then you would come home and you make food up and you kind of mess them up at first but you were determined to get that recipe light right and mix it just perfect and then you were up early in the morning you were setting your alarm clock you were excited to get up the next day and get your workout in because the energy you were experiencing and then later in the day you were doing your breathing exercises you got into a solid habit of going for a walk for 15 minutes and allowing your brain to cool off in the middle of the day to level out your stress levels and you were going to bed an hour early earlier because it was more important for you the next morning to wake up fully energized than it was to catch one more episode on Netflix. You were, (laughs) are you there right now? Have you slipped a bit? Has it become common? You've been getting something for so many months. You've been getting something for so many years that you forgot the feeling of the first time you experienced it. You forgot the feeling of the first time you cracked through and got the results. You forgot the feeling of the first time, oh, ooh, ooh, got the, mm-hmm. the shivers. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have results or you're looking at other people's successes or you're in a rut or things have become common, get hungry get hungry, reset your appetite, deprive yourself a little bit of something, shake it up a little bit, reset the appreciation, realize what you have, value what that hunger has brought you and break through that bland privileged palate of allowing the good stuff in your life, the health results, the weight coming off, being medication free, your marriage, your friendships, your finances, your home, your, and reestablish the goodness that is. Maybe you live now in an area of the country, you get to see a sunset every morning and every evening. When's the last time you watched it? It's one of my favorite parts of Easter. We get to see a few of those. Mm -hmm. Where has it become more bland? Reset that hunger. Hunger will drive your results. If you want something in your life, you're going to have to get the leverage of hunger. What is allowing you to be normal? What is allowing you to be complacent? What is allowing you to be easy? Or I don't really have to go for that because I'm pretty good where I'm at, but I kind of want that thing. How can you reestablish, put some leverage on yourself, a little bit of pressure on yourself to reestablish that hunger as if you've never experienced it before? as if you have no other option, as if it's just time to go. Get your appetite back. Get your hunger. Barry, don't just eat food. (laughs) Get it back. It's great. I love when you said if you take, you could take a hundred hungry people through our challenge and get great results. It can be the hungry ones. They just get, they get so excited. They just get so, oh, they just, you tell them to do something, they've already got it done (laughs) that afternoon. 
the hungriest I've been in my life is the compliment I get of how fast mm -hmm. I will implement speed of implementation, not speed of perfection, not speed, speed of, of practice a little bit, speed of implement. I'm going to get it into my life and I'm just going to start letting it go to work because I had a hunger and desire to get the end outcome. But I find myself, I'll drift a bit. You get complacent, you get comfortable, got to pull the heat again. Build that hunger back up. Love it. That's setting a tone for a good week. Get hungry. Go get them crew 31. The rest of you following, hit the follow button, notifications. We'll be live a couple more times this week, answering your questions, helping you out on Wednesday. We're back on Friday for another great show. 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard. So hit the follow. We'll be here to encourage you, motivate you. Help you to experience real health, live good, but we want to make it simple for you. And the easiest way that you can overcome the number one factor, hunger. Love it. Lead them out. Go make it a great day, guys. Might as well. We don't get this one back. Never getting it back.